Hi everybody, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Chad and today we are going to hear stories all about fishing. Maybe you've gone fishing before in the summertime or maybe in the winter time when you go ice fishing, but it's a lot of fun and some people even eat the fish that they catch. So let's settle in, get comfortable and hear some stories about fishing. Our first story today is called How to Catch a Fish, which is pretty important if you're going to go fishing. You have to know how to catch one. And it's written by John Frank, and the illustrations are by Peter Silveda. People all over the world catch fish. And again, some do it just for fun, and some do it so they can feed their families, and some do it for both. So let's find out how to catch a fish. This is how to catch a fish. Within the early hours of day, we launch our small boat from the beach and spread our net out on the bay. Then shortly after, drag it back upon the shore and sort the catch. Anchovy, tuna, kingfish, jack, and if we're lucky, there'll be lots to fill the village supper pots. Past ragged rocks and chunks of boulders, banks of stone that tame the tide, along the mighty river's shoulders just before it joins the sea, we troll our bait for silver salmon as they fight the current's motion, swimming upstream from the ocean, tugged by instinct miles and miles to spawn where they themselves were born. With bits of feather, yarn, and thread, we fashion insects, small and light, that look so real it seems as if they'll set their tiny wings a whirl, and in the morning haze take flight. In rubber boots that reach our thighs, we wade out in the coursing stream, and with quick wrist flicks of our rods, we cast in shimmering arcs the flies, which once our lengths of line play out, just scarcely graze the water's face, enough to tease the hungry trout. We chop a hole in the Arctic ice and crouched in layers of skin and fur to shun the frigid weather. Brr. We bait our hooks and lower our lines and jig them up and down to stir the fish below. But if they're near, we'll sometimes use a well-aimed spear. Around the neck of a cormorant, we've clamped a ring, a metal collar, and to this we tie a leash. In our flat-bottomed boat at night, we paddle up the river where our metal basket's flickering fire, its bright hypnotic dancing light draws sweet fish near. And as they follow, overboard the leashed bird dives to seize its prey, which we then take. Big fish, the ringed throat, cannot swallow. And that's in Japan, where they use birds to catch fish for them, a bird called a cormorant. Standing at the ocean beach on wet sand hemmed by hissing foam, we scan the surf to spot the be breach between the waves before they break, the cleft of sea where game fish roam. To there we'll cast our rigs from shore, our hooks and baits above the weights that quickly to the bottom sink, our gold spoon lures that flash and wink and catch some fish to carry home. We hide among the reeds that by the riverbank so thickly grow, or float on water, shallow, slow, in log boats crafted long and narrow, waiting with a watching eye to take the fish with bow and arrow. And that's in Namibia. So some people don't always use a fishing rod to catch a fish. Some people will use a spear or even a bow and arrow. 
in snorkeling mask and fins and armed to fire a spear or sharp harpoon, we hunt along the reef below the surface of the green lagoon for barracuda, dog tooth tuna, challenged by our lungs to dive as deep as one held breath will bear <gasps> before we must come up for air. We strip the bark from limbs of fur and make them into poles as tall as three men head to toe combined and lash them to a white oak hoop, a supple branch shaped over fire and netting from wild iris twined. Our dip nets now complete, we climb the rocks between steep cliff walls and swing the long poles through the roar of rapids carving canyon floor to catch the fish that scale the falls. Propelled by currents swift and strong, our fish wheel rotates round and round, its soft metallic hollow sound as rhythmic as a beaten drum. Three giant baskets scooping up the sockeye, the steelhead, coho, and chum, dropping them inside a pen, then circling back for more again. Through rags of morning mist, we set out on a lake smooth as glass. A few stone skips beyond the shore, we cast our spinner baits in grass that grows among the shallows and we let them sink, then reel them in with slow and steady turns, patient as a watch's second hand to lure the lurking largemouth bass. We strap on sturdy harnesses and brace ourselves in bolted chairs to angle for a fish whose size can dwarf gigantic grizzly bears, the blue marlin. One once caught by a hook weighed nearly 1,800 pounds, though some would say because it took more than one man to reel it in, it shouldn't grace the record book. It's every deep sea angler's wish, a battle packaged as a fish, a leaping, thrashing tug of war that strains to snap your rod in two, to drag your line until it melts, a fight for all you've got and more. And when we haul one from the sea, we sound our loud triumphant cheers and gauge its length and girth and weight, then set the wondrous creature free. As sunrise tints the eastern sky, the two of us walk down the pier, with fishing poles, one short, one tall, and tackle boxes, big and small. Above the ocean, way up high, we find our spot along the rails. I hope I'll be the first to get a nibble, then a bite, to reel in from the sea the right to beam with pride as passers-by who peer in all the angler's pails. Admire that first fish of the day, light glinting off its shiny scales. We slack our reels to free some line, and as I mull which rig to tie, I make my choice of hook and weight. We fasten them, we set our bait, then raise our rods, set loose our lines. Above the ocean, way up high, the two of us, my dad and I. And that is how to catch a fish. All right. Well, that was fun. We learned about the types of fishing people do all over the world. But let's now go to another story called We Love Fishing, written by Ariel Bernstein and illustrated by Mark Rosenthal. It's about four friends who go fishing, but only three of them really like to fish. Let's see if you can guess which one. Bear, porcupine, otter, and squirrel loved fishing. I love fishing. I love fishing. I love fishing. They love fishing. Bear, porcupine, otter, and squirrel can't wait to eat lots of fish. I'll saute mine with butter. I'll skewer my fish for a shish kebab. I'll eat mine after dessert. Let's see what squirrel says. Fish smell too fishy. 
Bear, porcupine, otter, and squirrel love to walk through the woods on their way to fish. Smell the fresh air. It's good to get exercise before eating lots of fish. I don't know what I love more, walking or fishing. Can we take a taxi? I, st I stepped on a pebble. Ack! I see a fly. That is a steep hill. Is there an escalator? Bear, porcupine, otter, and squirrel love to sit in their boat for hours as they fish. Fishing is so peaceful. It's relaxing to think about all the fish we'll eat. Any minute now, we'll catch one. How long has it been? I'm not catching any fish. Are you catching any fish? You want to play cards? I'm hungry. I ate all my nuts already. Nuts. Bear, porcupine, otter, and squirrel love fishing so much, they don't even mind when it rains. How refreshing. I see a rainbow. I needed a shower anyway. Rain makes my fur frizz. Bear, porcupine, otter, and squirrel think they feel a pull on the rod. It feels like a big one. Let's reel it in. I can taste it already. Huh? Did something happen? Bear, porcupine, otter, and squirrel are excited about their catch. Finally. Let's roast it on spears and have ice cream for dessert. I don't want to hold it. Why is it looking at me? It smells kind of fishy. It's so slippery. Hey, where's it going? <gasps> Oops. Oh no, what did squirrel do? Oh, squirrel dropped the fish back in the water. Oh. Bear, porcupine, otter, and squirrel could always try to catch another fish. We love fishing after all. R right, guys? I think squirrel feels a little guilty about dropping the fish. Bear, porcupine, otter, and squirrel are done fishing for the day. They do not always love fishing. Where's the nearest restaurant? Two miles, more exercise. I'm going to need dessert. I called a taxi and I'm buying. But everyone loves squirrel. Especially fish. <laughs> Well, so we've been talking about the kind of fish that you catch in a lake or a river or maybe even the ocean. But now let's go to Miss Taylor who has our fun December grab-and-go craft about the kind of fish that you don't catch or eat. Aquarium fish. Hey everybody, this is Taylor with the Marathon County Public Library and I'm here today to talk about the December Grab and Go project. It is a fine motor ocean. So you can pick up these kits at any MCPL location through the month of December. And basically, you'll get a paper plate, some string, and then some fishy die cuts. So we have a seahorse and some fish. What you're gonna do is cut along here, make some cuts around one half of the plate, and then you're gonna make a web, string the string through, and then you're gonna decorate your little sea animals and put them in the web. You can pick this up at any location for the whole month of December. Have fun. Thank you, Taylor. That looks like a lot of fun. Our last story for the day is called One Frozen Lake, written by Deborah Jo Larson with paintings by Steve Johnson and Lou Fancher. And it's about a boy and his grandfather who go fishing on, you guessed it, a frozen lake. Now that it's getting colder, ice is gonna start forming on the lakes. So maybe you'll go out and do some ice fishing too. So let's hear about it. One Frozen Lake. One frozen lake, two fishing friends, three bundles packed with line, lures, and snacks, four frosty inches, splash, 
five hours pass and not one fish. Where are all the fish? You see they're below the ice, but they're hard to see through the ice. One frozen lake, one warm canvas shack, two new jig sticks for two fishing friends. Three trays of tackle, sinkers, spoons, and spins, four watery holes, tunnels to peek in. Ooh, you can see fish through there. You can see their tails and their heads. Five more shacks, new fishing friends, six cups of cocoa, warm bellies and hands. Mmm. -mm. Nothing better than hot cocoa on a cold day. Seven hours pass, not one fish. Has anyone seen a fish? One pink sun finds one frozen lake. Two busy friends, Mark, Drill, and Scrape. Three foot drop off, here Mr. Pike. Jig, jig, jig. Four lost leeches five failed rigs, six pound test line, snap, nothing. A pike is a kind of fish, in case you were wondering. <sighs> Give me all your sevens, go fish. Eights, if you can't catch a fish, might as well play go fish, and that's what they're doing here. Nine o'clock already, better reel in. Wiggle, wiggle. Wait, a fish? A fish! 10 inches, a keeper, yay! Flip flop. Um, Grandpa? No, really? Please? Splash! He put the fish back in the water and let it go. That was nice of him. One frozen lake, goodbye. Two fishing friends, good night. Three miles till home, sweet dreams. Another lake, another day, another fish. The end and another few stories for you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the stories. Have fun with that craft, and we'll see you next time.